This year, Rocky Mountain PBS marks 60 years in broadcasting. In looking at the station's legacy, the 1959 show Ragtime Era stands out. It was the first hit for Channel 6 and also the first show broadcast nationally on what would become known as PBS. Ragtime Era's frontman Max Marath, now 89 and a 2016 Colorado Music Hall of Fame inductee, performed each 30-minute episode entirely from memory and in one take from beginning to end. We spoke with Marath about what Ragtime Era was like behind the scenes and its impact on his prolific career. Ragtime. Word still has an excitement about it, doesn't it? A charm. Makes you think not just of a kind of music, but maybe of a time, too. I've been in, in the entertainment and the media business uh, all my life. I got my first job as a radio announcer when I was 17 in Colorado Springs. I went to Stanford the summer of 51 for the Radio and TV Institute because I knew radio. I'd been working in radio stations for five years as a kid. You know, I was an announcer. It was terrible, but I was an announcer. And I learned about one end of the camera from the other. So I'd been in the entertainment business, and we transferred that to a very carefully constructed series, which was the Ragtime Era. This is 1959. These were the first programs on PBS. They were fun and they were entertaining and, and they answered what NET, soon to become PBS, wanted. It's not about the music per se, it was about America. When you were sweet. When you were sweet 16. That song's about 60 years old, yet I'll bet most of you know it, hum it or sing it once in a while. The idea was to discuss what happened in music before jazz appeared in around 1917. Ragtime as a form of piano music was developed by a lot of African American musicians in the 1880s and 1890s, which surfaced right at the turn of the century. And that ragtime was a very strict form of piano music. It was based on the uh, form of the march, two-four time, strong left hand giving a beat against which the right hand syncopated, which was very new. Nobody did that. And that was the breakthrough musically. I think that uh, it loosened the idea of what music could do. And Channel 6 in Denver at that time, I think uniquely, had a full-fledged three-camera operation with professionals, lighting, everything you could possibly ask for. And the talent there, the set designer, the photographer, the people that were behind the cameras, first rate. Channel 6 was educational and at 11.30 every morning they went to classroom programming. So the people that did the sets stayed up all night to get the sets ready. And we went in at seven in the morning and had to be out by 11.30 and I memorized the shows, and there was no stopping. Seated at pianos like this and making big money in sporting houses and saloons, like this one. A lot of stations all over the country picked them up and ran them, and if they didn't have a PBS station, they ran it on a commercial station. And the phone started to ring. We got reviews in the New York Times, we got reviews in all the other papers. So ragtime became a comfortable way for me to make a living. Got a Yankee Doodle sweetheart. I did my last performance in New York at the age of 80. I'd been at it for 60 years, so I did not retire, I just stopped touring. I don't think most people that might have viewed the series couldn't have cared less about ragtime per se. Look, these were good shows. I'm, I'm not going to say they weren't. They were fun, uh, they were well produced, they were very visual. We had a, they were television shows. We weren't doing uh, radio shows on camera. These were good television shows. And that was new to educational broadcasting. Thanks to our friends at WDSE in Duluth, Minnesota for their help with that story.